then you spoke about Kosato was financially stable at that time. So as a, as a new generation, we don't know much about that. I would like to know how, how where did you see uh, ANC and Kosato corruption thing started? Because immediately when we talk of corruption, when we think of ANC, more of the time people think of corruption. So I, I would love to hear your views about that, and the fact that ANC has most has well, is one of the parties that has leadership, most they have the most leaders in ANC, and even at that time they had more leaders because you mentioned that they used to have faith on their leaders, they stand by their leaders, they believe in their leaders, their leaders have to account for them. Accountable, if, yeah. Yes, and even today. Our leaders are able to stand at, at, on, on at ANC. You see, they are able to, to to stand in front. They are able to speak to influence the community. And I think most youth today they still believe in ANC. You see, they don't see other part. But I'm, I'm not a politician. But <laughs> I, I would like to hear your, your your views on that on corruption and on leadership on ANC. Are the leaders of today were the same as the as those ones? Uh, and do we do we do, do you think? The faith that they had on those years is the faith that we can we can we can restore in this new generation. Okay. Sure. Okay. Oh, sh should we take it the back there and then me? Yeah. I also want like to raise a question, uh, Mam Kashuka. I would like to know, seeing that we're talking about all this politics and that. And I know we in the working class, and we're the ones that's really struggling out here. And I have a different view, like my comrade is saying about people that still faith in ANC. Yes, there's still people that are loyalists to the ANC, but I believe there's still people that don't have, that don't have faith in the ANC. Yes, we belong to Kasato, and SACP is also there. Do you think there will be a breakaway from the ANC, Kosato in the SACP, and form their own party. Okay. Can I just try? These are difficult questions here. I, I, I just wanted to. I just I wanted to. Uh, if I could just. Um, you know, I'm sorry. I'm I'm a teacher, so I do these things. I I, I this the uh, the um. I, I, the argument I was making is that. In 1973, you had strikes, mass strikes, okay? And out of that, you had a certain a workers' movement emerged. At the same time, you had the ANC, which was a powerful, going back to 1912. Okay, so you had these two traditions here, and they came together, in a way, in Kasatu. Kasatu was a kind of strategic compromise. That's the word. It was a kind of strategic compromise between these two, what I call narratives, two traditions. And um, the question about, um, about um, leadership, I think the, the trade union tradition is a much more shop floor, direct, accountable. You know, you elect a worker and that worker speaks on your behalf. That worker doesn't go off to Cape Town and represent you in Parliament, okay? Do you know what I mean? There's a difference. There's a different kind of democracy. The one is direct democracy. You can see uh, we elect um, uh, you as the shop steward, and if we see you talking to the boss on your own, we know you're an impimpi, right? <laughs> okay? So, but if... If you elect somebody for Parliament, they come down and you don't know what they're going to do here in Cape Town, right? <laughs> and what deals they'll get up to, okay? So I think that they're actually, they're actually different ways of understanding democracy. I think that the, what I was trying to capture in this workers' movement was the idea of direct democracy as against a more indirect form. Now, the question about... Um, and they're different kind of leaders. I mean, a shop steward is usually uh, an ordinary worker uh, who uh, has the confidence of his fellow workers. 
uh, a politician uh, in the ANC is usually somebody who has got some kind of um, uh, um, education and uh, uh, networks and it's a different kind of of uh, leadership. Um, the question about um, corruption. Um, I mean, I don't. Um, um, I don't think uh, uh, there's, there is corruption in uh, Kasatu because they also have tenders uh, that they absorb it and they sit on, they have these union investment companies. But I don't think it's on any, I, 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 would, I wouldn't see that as a major, a major issue. Or whether, whether one could, leaders could re-emerge um, I suppose what I was suggesting is that the conditions that we are now facing uh, and the uncertainty is, is also an opportunity for a new generation to uh, develop a new vision and uh, a disciplined approach. So um, I think that is a that is a possibility, although I think generally the, the protests haven't really generated a clear kind of organization. Um, now there was a second, what was the second, oh, about the alliance, was it, about the workers' part? Look, um, yeah, you, you're putting me on the spot here a bit. Um, I think that um, um, if, you know, we've been doing surveys of Kasatu members now for since 1994 and if I say, we go into the factories and we ask questions about that the ANC and so on and roughly speaking roughly speaking about 70% support the ANC but there are there are two things um, that are important. Firstly, there are regional variations. So you'll find here in, in the Western Cape, there are, there are trade union workers who, who won't necessarily support the ANC. And you'll find in, in uh, Durban, there's some who support the IFP, for example. But, um, and secondly, there's been a steady decline. Not a dramatic decline, but a steady decline in support amongst workers for the ANC, but not a dramatic. So I, I would agree with you when you say that most workers um, support the ANC, and I, I, I don't think that the idea of... I think that um, maybe down the road there will be a separate political party. But I, I, I'd be surprised if it... Um, if it happens uh, in the next five, ten years, that's my 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 view about that. I think that the um, uh, the ANC is the party of liberation, and it's still seen at that by most workers. Um, yeah. So, what was the other question? Have I answered the questions? Yeah. I have two. I have some questions that have come through, so I can quickly answer these. Um, is the recent labor broking ETOL protest a Durban 1973 moment? Hmm. Um, that's interesting. Well, there was the, the, the big protest on the 15th of March, was it, or 15th of April, 15th of March? March. 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 Um, you know, what was different about those protests <laughs> is that they were on the streets. They weren't people staying at home. They were marching in the streets. And I think that's a, a significant difference. Um, I don't think, yeah, I think that the Durban moment was um, different. It was a period when there was an illegitimate state, a racist apartheid state. I think it's different now. I think we have a democratic state. It's been elected by the people. I, I wouldn't have seen it as the, um, as a, as the same. And... Um, what are your views on Kasato leaving the alliance? Okay, I think you've answered that one. I don't think...
that's going to happen in the short term. No. Yeah. Should I even me? Okay. Um, I, I, I just want to say thank you very much right, to yeah. Eddie. Yeah. Uh, comrade Eddie, not Professor. Um, <laughs> comrade Professor. Comrade I have a very different, pers uh, not a different perspective, I have a Cape Town perspective on a lot of Depends which, which side of the mountain you stand. Exa exactly. So I stand from the Cape Town side of the mountain of, of, of the struggle. And I grew up, and one of the first people who taught me about trade unionism uh -huh. was a woman called Zora Meshlamakulu. Uh -huh. And she, in 1972, uh, was part of a group of Saktu unionists who went to wages commission leaders, uh, to Paula Ensor, to Rob, Davey, uh, Rob Peterson, and other people like that and said, will you help us? Mm -hmm. And they helped build the first the Western Province Workers Advice Bureau, and then the, the later it became the General Workers Union, then, then it became the Transport and General Workers Union, and then it came, became Satao. And it was only when it became Satao with that that workers were killed on a large scale, but not before. Um, but to take a step back, uh, as Eddie mentioned, one of the important things of leaders in that time was that in 1976 there was a worker called Luke Mazwembe, Story Mazwembe, and he was killed in detention. He was a dock worker here, tortured and killed for being, being part of the labor movement. Similarly in Johannesburg, in 1982, uh, Neil Agate, a doctor, a young white doctor who joined the trade unions, the Food and Canning Workers Union, and Neil was killed in detention, or tortured so much that he killed himself. Um, and, 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 and I remember in 1982, all the trade unions calling for a, a, a stoppage in the factories. And at that time, it was the largest stoppage of workers in, 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 in factories. So this is the history that all of us must go back and learn. Because all we hear of in history now is MK and its few bombs, which actually didn't bring us anything apart from a few mad veterans. Um, but what we did have are worker leaders and community leaders that really uh, built the ANC, built the labor movement, built the UDF. And their stories are not being told. And unless we have people like any who Tell us about these things. Now, I want to ask Eddie a, a very difficult question. Um, and I, I hope I can get an answer. The, today's union movement is not yesterday's union movement. And I believe that our union movement looks back to the 18th and 19th century. It is still male-dominated. It, it doesn't have a view of the unemployed and casual workers that allows for unity. Its understanding of global, the global economy appears to be very limited. Uh, limited only to the ILO and so on, as opposed to massive joint campaigns by workers. So, and, and a lot of it has to do with the fact that unions have invested huge amounts of money in pension funds and, 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 and elsewhere, and also that the unions are in alliance with government. And at the same time, without Kasatu, our freedom in the country would be severely undermined because the labor movement has been indispensable, whether it was in tax struggle for ARBs, whether it is in the struggle to, against the secrecy bill and so on. So I want to ask you, what sort of vision do you have for a modern 21st century labor movement? in a world where unemployment and environmental danger uh, and uh, rampant and law lawless capital at global level exists. What, what's your vision for a labor movement? Sure, okay. Yeah, I want to explore, you, you, you made a point that COSATU embodied the Congress and the trade union tradition. Now, I want to know what actually that meant. I mean. So the trade union tradition is represented by FOSATU and the Congress tradition is represented by unions sympathetic to Congress, or was it something different? 
so what do you mean by Kosato embodying both traditions? My, my second question was, we speak about worker leadership and accountability and democracy. But what, we, what happened post-1994 is all the union representatives who ostensibly represented Kosato in parliament and in cabinet we effective, we essentially co-opted co and never represented worker interest at, at, at political level. So what, what happened there? Why didn't the union have the right of recall uh, for these union leaders who became people like Sidney Mafumadi, people like Sam Shiloh, or people like Jay Naidu, you know, effectively were co-opted? Okay. Well, th that, that question is, is, is in some ways easier to answer. I think that, I mean, the idea in 1994 was that because, as, as we've been arguing here, because the trade unions were so central to the struggle, that the next step was to go into Parliament and try and influence policy in post apartheid South Africa. And Kasatu sent uh, its key leadership, Connie uh, Sotemba being one of them, yeah, to, to Parliament. I think, uh, I mean, the, what happened is that they rapidly became isolated from their base. But that's, when you look at it uh, retrospectively, was inevitable because a political party uh, has a very tight caucus and discipline. So if you join the ANC, you've got to follow the ANC policy. And uh, what happened is that the, the, the Kasatu guys who came to Parliament first, 94, again in 99, were drawn into the structures of, uh, uh, of the ANC and uh, they lost contact with their members. I think it was, um, I mean, it's a difficult question because, I mean, the alternative, if you say, well, they should have formed their own party, well, then you get involved in parliamentary politics. Yeah, but not necessarily. If, if they had maintained the ground rules uh -huh. at the very beginning yeah. and not become co-opted, yes. Things would have changed, but because yes. they became co-opted, all subsequent leaders. But, but I'm saying that they came co-opted. Co-opted was kind of inevitable because they were subject to the discipline of the ANC then and had to follow its line. I mean, those. So I. But look, I, I think it could have been organised differently if they had tried to uh, establish close links. But I think they didn't do that. So that's one of the one of the um, uh, uh, disappointments of it. Uh, but I think that, that, that you're quite right. They did become isolated. Uh, uh, just if I go back to, uh, I mean, this is a tough one. Uh, okay, you've thrown at me here. Uh, trade unions in the 21st century. I think that the key difference is that uh, the trade union movement is now operating in a global economy. So when workers are producing a, 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 a shirt uh, in Newcastle, in KwaZulu-Natal, they're producing a shirt in competition with Chinese workers or Thai workers or some other workers who are operating on a much lower wage system. So I think that globalization has changed, changed it and I think, uh, <coughs> I think the first thing uh, for me, uh, 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 Zaki, would be that I think that trade unions have to think globally and internationally and start to, to organize on that on that basis, and I, 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 I think that the question about and I think a lot of things follow from from that because and I think Kasatu, in fairness to Kasatu, they are actually um, taking up the issue of climate change in quite a systematic way, because what's happened, you know, you're commoditizing nature, you you turning, uh, you're polluting, uh, you are destroying the environment, and and Kasatu realizes it's a very central question. It's quite difficult because you know if you are a mining worker. And, and, and you say, well, we must stop fossil fuel, uh, uh, coal, and that's going to affect jobs. That's quite a difficult set of choice, but I think they are grappling with it more than any other organization uh, in the uh, civil society mass organization, I think. But the, uh, they, they do remain not, not male-dominated. It's very interesting, actually, you look at the gender question. In the 1970s, there were a lot of women who were running the trade unions. As they grew in power, the men took over. It's a familiar story. Yes. <laughs> and the men started to dominate in the, in the leadership position. So you actually have less, uh, and we've done, you've got plenty of research to write, you've got less women in leadership positions in Kasatu now than we had in the 70s. 
because the men, uh, you know, wanted the power. And uh, on the question, oh, look, the, the big problem uh, uh, for labour is the casualisation and outsourcing, because it's undermining your traditional power base. Your power base lay in the factory, where you can bring production to a standstill. Now you have people in the informal economy working in the streets, working from home. It's much more difficult to organize. And I, that's what I would call a representational gap. I think it's fundamental. I don't think Kasatu is addressing it. I think they're addressing basically the permanent, more skilled, established workers. Rhetorically, they talk about organizing them. But I think uh, uh, they're going to have to do that if they want a future. Uh, I, I agree with you that. And I, I think um, on the question of unemployment, I mean, the... the, the, the um, uh, uh, it's very, I, I, I mean, the, there is a community work program, an expanded public work program that does provide jobs for people, and the community work program it does allow for continuous work two days a week. And Kasatu has supported that, but um, uh, uh, it's, it's a drop in the ocean still on that. Um, yeah, there was another question. No, no. Uh, I, I wanted actually before I forget that, uh, like yeah, actually uh, there's a book here on trade unions and the global crisis. I thought I'd leave behind. I have a chapter in here, and also another one of my books. Here. Can I leave? I see you've you got a sign. You can sign. Uh, okay, I, I, I see you've got the library here. That's great. Yeah, mm, sorry. Okay, there was another question. I, I do, um, somebody, who was it? Who was it? The embodiment of Kosato at the ANC. Oh, 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 the question about the compromise. Look, I think you know. I think that. Um, well, I'm trying to suggest that there are these two traditions, okay? Uh, and I think that um, uh, the, I understood the compromise to be that Kasatu would form an alliance with the ANC, accepting the ANC as the leading uh, uh, force in the national liberation movement, but acting independently, that Kasatu would be an independent, autonomous body. And... Uh, uh, I think that's um, that's uh, uh, is is how it was conceived. I, I think the problem is that by forming an alliance with the ruling party, the trade union leaders then start to uh, to um, uh, think in terms of of moving from the trade union into government into either local government or provincial government or central government or becoming cabinet ministers or so on and so forth. And I think that it acts as a kind of patronage network. And uh, I think that maybe um, uh, uh, that's something that, that, that is a fundamental flaw. I think that they shouldn't, they shouldn't, they shouldn't, it shouldn't be a stepping stone into, into the ANC. But, uh, uh, um, uh, 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 Vavi, as Vavi isn't, says he's not going into parliament, hmm? into government. So, wait and see. I mean, maybe, um, maybe you're smiling, you think it's not likely to happen. Eh? It's, it's a temptation, and um, um, I think that's a dangerous thing. I think the trade unions should stay independent from that, but they could still be in alliance and try and influence it. Yeah. Mm. And on that note, um, please help me in thanking Professor, Web Professor Conway Webster for this extraordinary trace. <laughs>